Hello friends, this is Adam Baragzai over at AHS Realty Pros and today we have a special guest here. He's going to introduce himself. Hey everybody, I'm Mitchell Chernock with American Pacific Mortgage and what an honor to do training and work with the great real estate agents at AHS Realty right here in Concord, California. And so I'm going to show you guys uh, his presentation that he's going to be putting on today. If you guys got any questions, you're definitely free to, uh, to reach out to him. So you'll find his contact information below. Thank you, everybody. This is about growing your business. Love, care, serve, create great relationships, and your life will be great. Oh, you're Harry. That yes. is, so I'm, I'm calling you. You're a listing agent, right? Oh. Yeah, I like that. So you're on the other end of a transaction. I call you, and I lay out this plan to do a really great job on the buyer that, that maybe Adam brought in. And so we're working in the transaction. I would ultimately try to get you to tell me that I've done an 8 or a 9 or a 10, and then I'd invite you to meet with me, and I would do what we're going to do here one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. I don't always start off that way. A lot of realtors don't appreciate the fact that anybody wants to come in and show them how to be better. <laughs> okay, <laughs> But um, so just a little bit about me uh, and my company. I joined American Pacific in January 2012, so it was eight years this January. And, uh, and it was after actually 20, 21 out of 23 great years owning my own company, which was Sky Valley Financial. Uh, I was a broker. Uh, the broker portal began to fail, and I needed a company that was going to stand behind us. And the thing that's interesting is joining them in 2012 is the company has actually almost tripled its production since then. Um, and, uh, and I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, uh, although they do ma amazing stuff. They've gone from 19 states, they're in 49 states. Oh. Wow. Okay. And That's the toughest awesome. state in the world you would think to get into would be the gaming state, which would be the Na Nevada, but it's New York. Oh, wow. They got like 65 miles of regulation. Mm -hmm. But American Pacific, the, the people that run it, are some of the best people I've ever worked with in my entire life. So I've got these people above me that are just like totally amazing folks. Mm -hmm. um, if any one of you, I was recruiting you, and you've been in the business for a while and had some loan, while and had some loan volume, I could call the owner of the company and I would have him have lunch with you, oh, wow. and he would do it. And we did over ten billion this last year. So when you got a company guy like that, and everybody beneath him is the same way. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to tell you that because it means that, that when we get into a transaction and we're moving along, if everything's going well, that's always great. You want to know how we are when there's a fire, right? Can we put it out or can we even stop it from getting going? So I have my own, and each, each office does. We have our own underwriting team. So I'm on blue. So I have five underwriters that I can call at any given time and get information. And for somebody who's been in the business like me, for um, I, I transitioned over from, uh, from real estate when I was actually in respiratory medicine for almost 10 years at John Muir Hospital, uh, is it's an amazing company, an amazing time, and a lot to learn. So I, I hired this new gal. Her name is Shaween. And... Uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, because we've, we have a really wonderful array of people in here from all kinds of different places. So Shamin's family is Kurdish. And, uh, and so she, and she's a very linear person, which is great. She takes great notes. She's really good at what she does. And I'm teaching her. And the other day she said, I don't know that I'm getting this the way that you want me to. And I said, do you have any idea how many times I call scenarios every week? See, I only know everything because I know who to call, not because I have it up here. And if we all treat ourselves that way, mm -hmm. then I think we're going to be really great. Because these guys are great mentors, and, and obviously I want to be part of your team. So I have a little extra added nuance every Saturday from 10 to 4 p.m., even if it's not my transaction. I have an underwriter all day on Saturday. And I call them sometimes to say hello because I know nobody's calling them. So if you're in a deal with a buyer and something's going on and it's like, we heard this or X, I can call an underwriter and ask and not just give you my opinion. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks, Kenny. So uh, just kind of restate, I'm Mitchell. Um, I don't go by Mitch, but if you call me that, I'm, I'm not going to go crazy on that because my son does it. 
Um, so I have a family. I have a wife. I've been with my wife for 44 years. And uh, yeah, and uh, and I have uh, I have two grandchildren uh, that or three grandchildren. I was going to say she's going to get a little bit older here in a couple of weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming, I think my grandchildren are probably older than you are. <laughs> They're 33, 31, and 31. Uh, 36. Ah, cool. So you look very young. Thank you. But I have two great granddaughters. Uh, one of them does commercials for me, so it's a lot of fun. So it's a lot of fun, which is the other thing. You kind of have fun in this business, right? Mm -hmm. So um, my goal today was to keep this exciting. Uh, I want to give you a brief history of my time in the industry as I went from medicine and did real estate part-time in the 1970s. Um, I actually went to a Tommy Hopkins seminar called Champions Unlimited in 1976. And of course, Tommy's probably well past being retired, but he was the guru in real estate at that time. Mm -hmm. If you ever look up Tommy Hopkins, you'll find out that he was the, the chief architect of farming and all kinds of stuff. And then Joe Stubb came along, uh, Mike Ferry, Tom Ferry, uh, and a whole assortment of other guys that have made your business really grow. Uh, so now, I'm in a coaching program. And some of you might know that because I might have mentioned it. So these documents, this stuff that you have in there, what do realtors do? This is your, your theme sheet. And this theme days comes from the core. Now there are 44 coaches in the core. 12 of them are realtor coaches. Here's something you need to know about coaches in the course. You have to qualify, and you must maintain a 100% full-time real estate business to stay a coach. You can't be a coach unless you're a realtor. So these are not guys that are coaching you, but they're not doing it. Mm -hmm. So when I tell you this, and you know, when you look, like, let's say that you were looking at Kenny, and Kenny, uh, just I'll pick a number and say, hey, Kenny made $500,000 as a realtor last year. And you're like, oh my God, you know, and I made 50. And you're like, how does that work? If one can do it, all can do it. Uh, did everybody get my email this morning? Yes, anybody read it? Yes. So one of the, it's all simple, it's so simple stuff. But the simpler it is, the more difficult it is that you're going to be your schedule. None of the real estate coaches net without coaching under one million. All 12 of them make over a million dollars a year as realtors, strictly from their real estate business. The 34 lender coaches make between one and eight million a year. So my personal coach, his name's Mike Bowen, he's an awesome guy, I was at his office a couple weeks ago in Denver. He closed 387 transactions last year. I'm one of those, I'm one of those I, I never say much about it in this way. I'm a, kind of like a, a woman guy in terms of the way that our industry works, is about 80% of the coaches have no men on their teams. Just, it's linear, guys. I mean, women do a better job at follow-up. It's just the way it is. My coach is the first coach I've worked with in four years that has a guy who runs his team. But there's a woman who runs the part underneath him. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm telling you that, but I'm telling you that because you can be on both sides of this industry. You can be a support person and just do a phenomenal job and deliver a wow service. And you can be on this side and hire people that will help you do that. And that's part of what the core is all about. So the core started in 2001 by a guy named Rick Ruby. He's a lender. It was only lender centric. They had no realtors until about 2006 or 2007. And they realized that they needed to bring on some folks. And he was coaching realtors, but didn't have any coach, realtor coaches. Uh, and the, the most famous one is going to be Rita Casey and Kendra Cook, and I'll be able to send you information on them. Both of them are multi-million dollar earners. Both of them have since left their real estate businesses and turned them over to people, and they both operate as overseer coaches at the core. The core, to me, is the most elite coaching organization in the country. Um, I know a lot of people uh, use Buffini. Um, Buffini is still, a, uh, 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 I think, the best way for most realtors to go because it's, it's got a plan and you execute the plan and it works. Uh, the difference is, is the accountability in the core is a lot higher, but also the cost is a lot higher. Um, and, and the litmus test is a lot higher. Most coaching 
in this country is non-qualified coaching. Is it, is it for me or is it fair? Hey, Farid. So Farid picks up the phone and calls Buffini and says, I want to be coached at the highest level. And they say, okay, it's $512 a month. We'll sign you a coach. We're going to interview you. We'll figure out how to get you going. Hey, thanks, man. In the core, it's if you're not at 10 million, you're not getting coached. <laughs> okay, period. But they have a coaching program below that called their audio program. And I will be sending at any time that you want audios to you on any subject that you can most likely even imagine. So before I leave today, um, because I'm on the lender side as a level three student, I get all the real estate stuff. And I'd rather listen to that than the lender stuff because it's almost the same, but the nuances are going to help me to help you get listings and sales. So I have an audio that I'll send you. It's a direct link audio, so you don't have to sign in. And it's uh, it's a role playing audio for realtors. Uh, I I don't ever send out stuff I haven't listened to, but I only got it on Friday, so um, I haven't listened to this one. But they're all really great, uh, and that's something we'll get to do today. Um, and I think it might be fun is ultimately do some role playing and and talk about how what we say to sellers. And, and I might start off, since both of you guys are here, with Adam and Kenny, because I'm thinking that you guys are probably the most experienced in the room. I don't know that. Thank you. I know that. Thank you. Daisy is too. Martha's coming 42 years. She'll be here. We got, we'll get the room's going to grow a little bit. Cool. So I'm going to grab some uh, more chairs. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's, uh, yeah. So I'm going to show you something that, that this is my greatness tracker. I mean, you got to watch out. I don't think we're going to get sure. I thought it was good. We're expecting This is my greatness room. tracker from last week. Okay. Now, um, I think you guys have a greatness tracker? Yes. Yeah, yeah okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, so the greatness tracker, yours is a tiny bit different than mine. Um, so I encourage everybody, the, the, the saying in the industry is any realtor who fills out this form, even once, because this is a weekly form, you'll totally change your dynamic in the following week. So last week, um, I had 12 face-to-face -face meetings. Okay, um, and by the way, this is not considered a face-to-face. -face. It was only, uh, it's face-to-face -face is only three people. So this would be considered a meeting. So it's an event that I'm hosting, okay. But I had three break breads, which meant I actually sat down and had lunch with somebody or ate food. The 12 face-to-faces can be coffee, and I'm gonna sh talk to you about these and who you'd be doing them with. And then I had 60 great phone calls, okay. A great phone call, call for a realtor or a lender is that you have a great conversation and that you ask for something, offer something, or invite them to something. So offer something, ask for something, invite them to something. Right now. Cool. Yeah. cool. So, and we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna get to this form, but um, and there's no need to ever attend more than one or two events a week. Um, and we'll get to events, and I'll go down through here why these are so important. Because um, for Adam and I, like when we go out and we visit people, our, our first thought is, I'm going to hand you a business card, right? Mm -hmm. And I know where it could end up, mm -hmm. right? But if I meet three at an event, and she's a realtor, and I give her my card, and she's like, I don't know if I need another lender, I don't know if I even like this guy, but if you give me your card, I'm going to call you. See, that's the difference. When you meet a client, a CPA, a, um, an investment advisor, a referral client, you're at an event, uh, a chamber mixer, and, um, and uh, you see somebody. Like, let's say you look at Kenny. Kenny's always smiling. Right? So you see a guy across the room like Kenny, you walk over and you introduce yourself. It's not about you giving your business card. It's about starting a conversation. And in that conversation, you might ask for a business card or contact information. And because, and because you're at an event, you say, hey, Kenny, I would love to give you a call tomorrow and finish off our conversation and talk to you about what we're talking about. It's just a way of inching your way in. So, I wanted you to get an idea of what this form actually is, because it's it's my guide form. The difference is is that the minimum 
up here is 15 and 5 is 20. Okay, but that's a guideline. The core minimum is actually 12. Okay, and I did uh, uh, 15 total. If I have less than 12 meetings, I get fined $50 a square. No way. If I fill this out and I don't have 60 great calls, I get fined $10 a square. Okay? It's about accountability. So, what's your first name? Alejandra. Alejandra, because I think I met you once before yes, a while yes, back. Yeah, yes. yeah. So we're just we're talking about the greatness tracker, but what I want to do is just I wanted to bring all of that up. So the greatness tracker is the first form that was ever created for the core, and the lead tracker, which was right behind it. So I want you to think about this. I'm going to give you an exercise, and then we'll talk about this. Now it's not an exercise for right now. How many of you have sat down and written down the most 100 incredible people in your life? Okay, so do you, I had a realtor call me yesterday, and I, I've been mentoring her, and she said, I made 20 cold calls today, and I'm like, ooh, yeah, <laughs> ooh, creepy, right? I mean, it's like, who are you cold calling on a Sunday? Um, so, uh, <laughs> right? You guys, can we all get a wave to Mitch over here, by the way? Over here, everybody wave. You right. guys are awesome. Uh, You're incredible, Adam. <laughs> you really bring some joy to all of this. So, it, it's... I think that when you realize what our goal is and what we want to do, um, sure, I'm fine, but you're not. And I want to have fun. So if you wrote down 100 people, or 25. So everybody in here probably knows 25 people. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now those 25 are different. If you want to circle them, right? Your first 25, you have three circles. Your first circle was 25 people. Those are 25 people that, in your mind, the cell phones have wrecked this a little bit. I know 25 people. I know their phone numbers by heart. Okay, And I would know and recognize all 25 people no matter where we are in the world. Now keep in mind, I've been doing this for a really long time. So, But when you're going through your cell phone looking through your 25, you go, oh, Sally, I haven't seen her in about six months. The holy... Yeah, I mean, it's why Sally, Sally, something funny. No, no, something funny. No, no, no. Oh. That, I, that's without caller ID. You know, who yeah. people are sometimes. Yeah, I know. So, so, yeah. uh, so you you look at Sally and go, wow, you know what? She's an awesome person. She's a nurse at John Muir Hospital. She's an incredible human being. I haven't talked to her in six months. She's a friend of my sister's. I should give her a call. So you write her in your top twenty-five because you know that if you call and you say. Hey, Sally, this is Kenny. She goes, wow, I haven't heard from you in a long time. She's not even going to say hello, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 25 people that you know, that will know you when you call them, okay? Your number may or may not be in their phone. The next 50 people are 50 people that you know as well, might not recognize them, but you know who they are, where they work, what they do. And then the next 25, if you don't have 100 people, are 25 types of people or people that you want to meet. Right? Like, let's say that you went to an event, and because Realtor Days, our theme day, is, um, is that you go to an event and you met a financial planner. And you leave and you go, God, you know, that guy's name is Richard Del Monte. I'm going to look up Richard, because I didn't get a chance to ask for his business card. Oh, his business is in Alamo. He's an upper-end financial planner. He also happens to be the guy that helps manage the money for the John Muir Foundation. So I called him up, because I'm on the foundation at John Muir, and, and I, obviously I have a reason for that, is I started my entire professional life in medicine at John Muir, and I never went anywhere else. So that, I love that place. I was there when there was one building, <laughs> okay, 1973. But Richard is an amazing guy. I called him up, I go out to lunch with him, he says, why are we meeting? I said, I have two things. One, I want to have a relationship with you. You're a great guy. I've heard you talk about the foundation. I heard you talk about your love of life. I heard you talk about how you love your religion, um, how you love your wife and your kids, and you're the kind of person I want to get to meet. He gives me his daughter to do a loan, and she buys a house, and I do a loan for him. Okay? I'm doing a loan for him on his house in Alamo. 
it's about three and a half million. The reason I'm doing a loan for it is, is he decided he was going to do a $500,000 remodel. I think he was insane there. But the whole idea is flip that around and flip it from doing a loan. So I remodeled my house a couple of years ago, and it was really great to meet you. And you know, do you want to talk to me about selling my home? And it might be a $400,000 house, or it might be a $3 million house. So part of what we're going to talk about today is scripting and role playing and taking advantage of how you do this. So I'll ask, I'll ask, and by the way, when I ask questions, it's only to assess where you're at for yourselves, where you're at for yourselves personally. Has anybody ever sat down and made 100 outbound phone calls in a week to people that you know or, or warm handoff calls? Yeah. So there's a, a saying in the core is the person who makes the most phone calls connects to the most people and then, of course, I put that in there and creates the deepest, longest lasting relationships. I mean, I mean, you could literally have somebody call Kenny that he's remiss and hasn't talked to in three months and have him call him and say, Hey, you know what? I was thinking about you. My brother wants to buy a house when you sell him a home. He's not going to call him and go, You haven't talked to me, man. He's, because you have that relationship. Now, uh, does anybody know the National Association of Realtors? because they do all these wonderful little statistics, what the average length of time is before the buyer or seller of the property you listed or sold forgets who you are in your company name. Anybody know? Four years. Yeah, say it again. Four years? It's, it's six Sorry. months. Six months. Uh, six months. Hi. Like six months after you close? <laughs> yes. But, but does anybody know why they don't remember who you are or your company? Because you don't follow up. You don't follow up. Yeah. You don't follow up. Hi. What's your name? Martha. Hi, Martha. I'm Mitchell. Hi, nice Mitchell. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Everybody's Sorry. got a great attitude here today, too. So, um, and and I love what I'm doing. So, and I do it a little extemporaneously. So, if I jump around a little bit, forgive me. And you can also, any one of you can pull me back to something you want. Okay. And we're video in this too. Yeah. So. Um, each of you, I think, got this little guy right here. It says, I am your competition. Give her a hold. Sure. Oh, oh, you no, should no, use she the folder. Oh, she has the bad Oh, she has the folder. Now, you take care of me. Thank you. Thank you. So, if you look at number two on here, oh, that was yours? No. On I am your competition. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Every phone call you decide not to make places me one call ahead of you. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so think about it. So I, I, I was with a realtor the other day, not a new realtor, and somebody who's doing about 20 transactions a year. And I asked her, I said, I said, how do you start your Monday? Now, she has a very similar situation as I do. I, I have a great granddaughter that stays with me on Sunday night. Okay, so I take her to school Monday morning. So I get up Monday morning, 5.45, and I work out. I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of one of those crazy great-grandfathers. She, she's nine, and she's a little tiny little thing. So I go upstairs, and I pick her up, and I bring her downstairs, and put her on the couch, and I get her a glass of milk, some milk, and then I'll get my wife coffee, make Peyton's bed, and then I check email. I do not do any business before 7.30, period, none. And if I am listening to something, just go to YouTube and type in the word motivation and just have your brain exploded and, and you'll feel wonderful, okay? So I asked her how she started her Monday and she went through some of the same routine I do, except for the fact that she gets up at 5 a.m. and starts returning emails. You don't want your doctor returning phone calls and emails at 5 a.m because you know they're going to be tired and they're going to make a mistake in the afternoon. You don't want your realtor doing that either. Nobody wants to know that you're up at 5 a.m. and talking to them at 10 o'clock at night because it makes you the what? The, the 24 hour realtor. Mm -hmm. No realtor ever needs to be the 24 hour realtor. Now, in coaching, they will say to you that even if you don't have it in your voicemail, and if Kenny's my client, and we say, hey, Kenny, it's, it's Monday, it's a great day. By the way, Monday's my late evening. I return phone calls until 7. Otherwise, I don't return phone calls after 6 p.m., and I don't take any phone calls on Saturday after 4 p.m. Does that work for you? 
I want to make sure you know I'm available during those times. I'll kill it. Anything that you need, I will take care of it. I know you've got kids. i got kids. i got a family. I have a commitment to my wife that I come home at 6 o'clock without my phone, which is very difficult. And, uh, yeah, although Peyton comes and takes my phone half the time, and she'd rather play on that than the iPad. But if you start doing that to your life, you give yourself a life. That's really cool. Is there, how, how many people in here are married? Okay. We still learn how to do it. Has anybody has anybody read the five love languages? No, I'm not oh, cool. married, but I have read that. Cool. So so I'm redoing it right now, and it's an amazing thing, you know, being with my wife for it would be 45 years actually in May, and and May what? Huh? May what? Uh, I think it's like May second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, we, we met in late April, and she called me and invited me out on a date. Uh, hey, I was 20. Okay. <laughs> By the way, my I wife is 17 years, years older than I am. So. Wow. Mine's in May also. That's why. Yeah. She's yeah. 17. My, my, yeah, but she looks younger. My yeah. wife. My wife that's is. Crazy. My wife is 17 years older than I am. So. Um, and if I was 20 in 1975. Kind of. Most younger. Wow. Yeah. Now I didn't know that. I mean, she was a young-looking chick, right? That's yeah. how she describes herself. And I was in medicine. I had a beard down to here and a big huge afro, so she thought I was in my 30s. I thought she was in her 20s. It was the other way. But, um, and, then, and then she went and got a real estate license and sold 100 houses a year for builders for about 15 years, and uh, which was pretty crazy, but it, and that's how I ended up on this side, probably. Although we had a medical conversation yesterday because I was at a legacy luncheon at John Muir. And somebody said, so why did you leave medicine? And she looked at me and she goes, yes, why did you leave medicine? And I said, I don't. I still don't. Um, but I'm, I'm the lone doctor anyway. So, um, so I, I want you to have, so your first assignment is you've got to figure out a way to get 100 people on, on your list. Okay. Um, so this, this, this greatness tracker, which you have one of these, I would tell you that if you found a way to fill out one of these, uh, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The hundred people that you're talking about, uh -huh. do they necessarily have to be clients? Or oh, no, not at all. Not at all. As a matter of fact, think about it. Um, I, I, I've, I've spoken with you before. You came so from another they, industry. They, that done that. Yeah. More than a hundred. Yeah. So, so think about it where uh, you pick up the phone. And let's just say it's been months since I've talked to Adam. And he's a friend, client, business person, not one of my realtors, because if I ever went this long without calling him, it would be that I had a purpose. So let's say it's been a few months since I've talked to you, or maybe even a year, or two years, right? I did a loan for you. I listed your house, and it sold, and I promised you all of these things, and we're going to stay together, and I didn't. Some of the first phone calls that you make are going to be the people you haven't talked to in a while. It's the million dollar call. That's right. It's the apology call. Mm -hmm. Some people are so busy that they don't know if it was yesterday or two years ago, but they do know it's been a while. And when you call them and say, be like, so I'll role play with Kenny. It's like, hey, Kenny, it's Mitchell. How are you? Who? Yeah, Mitchell Chernock. Hey, I did your mortgage for you on 127B over in Vallejo. Uh, wow. Back in February of 2017. Oh, 18, 18. Oh, wow, that's been a long time. I know it has. How, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well. Doing yeah. well. You're still, you're still in your home. I, I, I'm going to tell you, it's crazy that I haven't no, talked to you. No, actually, no. You sold your house. I sold it. Wow, and you moved. Where'd you move to? Concord. Cool, man. So you know what that tells me, Kenny? I did not keep in touch with you. I made a big, huge mistake by not getting to know you very well. How's your home in Concord? Great. Yeah? Yeah, um, good so, neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys oh. the next version? No. Oh. Adam. Oh. Adam and Angel. That was being funny. So, so, since, so, so in my mind, since he's already moved and used another lender, what is the most important thing for me to do right now? Do you know anybody else mm -hmm. I can help? No, we'll get there. Oh, okay. Is tell me about your life. Because I'm calling oh, I'm to reacquaint with him. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, sure. So, where do you want to start from? <laughs> yeah, so, it's been a while. Yeah, no, I know. I, I think it's great. What caused you to move from Vallejo to Concord? My church. Oh, wow. You know what? I think that is an amazing thing, that, that where we're at in today's society, and for people to profess their belief, um, and actually to change their life because of it, is very profound, and I, I champion that. Th thank you for letting me know that. That's awesome. I... Uh, I'm going to tell you very honestly from what you said to me, I certainly, I'm going to tell you that I missed an opportunity to work with you. Oh, no. no problem. Yeah. It's, no, it's okay. Yeah. I don't want that to happen again, though. Okay. In the next couple of weeks, uh, just any time, do you mind if I met you and took you out for coffee and, and thank you for doing business with me previously and get, get back to knowing you? Yeah, sure. Do you go? I, I do. I do. Well, let's go play some golf. I think you already invited me for that, and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that was a reminder. <laughs> yes. But you, you kind of get an idea of how simple it is. Yeah. I could have been like, what the? You, yeah. you sold your house, and you got another one, and, and, and you probably didn't even use your old realtor, and right? You know, this, this, I, I just kind of, this is a kind of true story. Because I helped my sister-in-law get into a house in Vallejo, right? So it was a rental. But I helped the guy sell his property, you know, in a short sale to his fiance. He bought it back, and then he, you know, bought another house. You know, he had actually lived in another house. Actually, bought another house. You know, sold that, bought another house. And so I'm like, oh man, how can you go? I should have followed up with this. If I would have followed, that's three transactions right there. <laughs> you know, within a period of time. So that's true. It's keeping and building those relations, even though it's just to say hi or how's mm -hmm. it going. Because you got to be in mind. Because if they don't remember, you know, yes, they remember you do, helping them and go through that process and that time. Right. But if you don't keep up with them when it's really time to, you know, transact, yeah, they're gonna forget. Yeah, let's, I'm gonna have. I'm gonna take an extra step and have you be in the affirmative about something that you have not done yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just so you can kind of get an idea because no matter how many leads we get, no matter how often we call them, they're gonna do things that we don't expect, and they may actually like us. I had a client the other day walk into an open house, and he wanted the house, and he called me about it, and I said, no matter what you do, Kim showed you that house. You've got to go to Kim. Kim Tran is a, a client agent who is now EXP, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and so he called her, but he didn't use me. And I said, what's up with that? And he said, well, I went into the open house, and the realtor said that he would help this transaction go through it. I would use him. I would use his letter. Now, instead of me getting all over him about that, I said, hey, Mark, you know what? That's pretty cool. Do you mind if I quote you anyways? I quoted him the same price. But what happened is, is he looked for two months, went into an open house on a Saturday, and get the offer accepted Saturday night. So I don't know that you could say that I missed an opportunity. But I also asked him, and it turned out to be a very specialized situation for that house and for him. I said, let me ask you something. Did I do a great job for you? And he goes, yeah. And he says, it's not about that. I said, oh, it is. And he goes, why? And I said, because I'm going to keep calling you. I want to make sure that I do enough good work for you and take great care of you and get to know you better so that you can still refer me. He goes, oh, absolutely. Right? So in this question, it's going to be, wow. So you sold your host in Vallejo, moved to Concord. But I remember one thing about you, Ken, is you talked to me about buying real estate, not buying a home. Have you bought that investment property yet that you promised yourself? Oh, not yet. Wow. When we get together, can I talk to you about that and how we might be able to make that possible to happen this year? Sure. Cool. So now I've set him up to come back to me and to also talk to him about buying that investment property. Now, here's the thing. What if it's two years before he's going to qualify? But I sit him down and I actually do some true, real front forward planning with him. How much money do you have? I got about forty grand. You want to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house? You need eighty thousand dollars. How do we get you eighty grand in the next two years? Oh, Mitchell, I do this and this and this. I've got a budget. Uh, I, the company I'm in, I'm going to be getting RSU, which is stock units. I'm going to get bonuses. I think I think by January two thousand twenty-two that I'm going to have the money. Great. What I'm going to do? Because you told me you're saving that money and this is your goal. Do you mind if I call you every month for six weeks to see how you're doing with it? I'll send you some information. I'll also send you ideas on investing. Okay. All right? Now, six weeks goes by. I call Kenny. 
hey, how's it going? Hey, we're going to have our coffee meeting tomorrow. Just wanted to remind you that we're getting together. Hey, Mitchell, I don't really have time to talk with you. But I was talking to a coworker, and she wants to list her house and buy another one. Can I give her your name? That's never going to happen unless you've made these phone calls. Does anybody know what you say at that point? What would be what would be a normal response to that? Anybody? So, okay. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Right. Right. Can I get her contact information so I can follow up with her so you don't have to? <laughs> See, here's the thing. I call it. I, I, I having having had kids and grandkids and, 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 and great grandkids and, and great grandkids is I call it it's the it's the dirty diaper call. <laughs> I'll call you. And you go home and your husband's mad at you, your wife is mad at you, your 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 sixteen year old wrecked the car, uh, the kids got dirty diapers, and I'm sorry, you're not gonna pick up the phone and call your realtor or your lender. It just ain't gonna happen. And you'll promise yourself you do it tomorrow or the next day. The thing is, is the way that you said it is the only way it can be said. Because any way else, it's kind of like, well, <laughs> this is, wow, you know what? Would you mind if I gave her a call? I know that I'm going to do it. Right? And it's like, yeah, why not? She's a friend of yours. Share her information with me, and, and I promise that I will take incredible great care of her. And by the way, Kenny, whenever I get a personal referral, I follow up with the referral source, whether they're professional or not. And, you know, obviously, you know, you run a huge landscaping company. You're a business professional, but you're not in my industry. I don't know that it means anything to you, but when I call your friend, I'm going to call you back and let you know that I spoke with her and how it's going. Okay? So, this is all scripted stuff, right? So, um, when you go to the movies, even ladies, I say that, and you go to see your favorite actor or actress, are you watching them or watching the character that they're playing? And especially some of the things that we see that are out there these days, you can't discern between the character and the actor because that's how great they are. That's how great you need to be. But we just get a, a better opportunity to be genuine every single day. So if you walk away with a script or you role play with somebody and it doesn't sound right, even if it's a little clunky when you're on the phone with somebody, it's going to come off very genuine. And it's not going to be mechanical. And it's not going to be, oh, but wait, the next thing I need to do is I need to ask you for a referral. Right? <laughs> right? So it all becomes very natural. And that's why this is so important when we're having this conversation. Because these coaches that I told you about, the average core coach closes around 150 to 200 transactions a year. The coaches that they're coached by and the people that help them in that group, uh, the biggest guy uh, is Dayton Schrader. He's an amazing man. He's a lot of fun. Um, I've done some live presentations with him. He's in San Antonio. But he is the highest producing realtor in San Antonio, one of the highest in the country. He closed over 650 deals last year. He has 19 people on his team. And I think he went to three showing agents, but the, the core model is different than some, you know, you have an office where you have a bunch of realtors and those realtors are part of another realtor, and they all either get a percentage or whatever. Uh, showing, agents, showing agents in the core are salary and bonus. So they might start at 50 or 60 grand a year and they get 500 or $1,000 for every closing. So they, make, they can make 70, 80, 100 grand a year without having to sell a real estate. When you have a showing agent, you have somebody that learns the market, understands it, is able to go into a particular neighborhood and talk about those neighborhoods and things. But that's why these guys are able to do so much. So I, I think that at the end uh, of the day, if I remembered to do it, or I just tell you right now, if you wrote down everything you love to do in this business, and put it on the left-hand side, and everything you don't want to do on the right-hand side, this side's going to be like this, and this side's going to be like this. These are all the things you hire somebody to do. Obviously, when you're doing one or two transactions a month, you're just getting started, you can't do that. Which is why a transaction coordinator or your two senior mentors are really great in getting to where you want to go. So I have a team of, of four people, including myself, and then I have another six down at my other office, but they don't, they work for me, but they don't work for 
my team. So they're never involved in my transactions unless it's overflow. So when you call my office, it's going to be Michael or Sherry or Shaween, and they're going to be like, hey, how can I take care of you? And how do we deliver a great experience? When you don't have a team, just remember every single time you look in the mirror, there's two of you. You are your own boss. Being self-employed does not give you the right to not work hard, complain about your competition, wonder how to make more money, and worst of all, lie and cheat and steal on your income taxes, which is what a lot of my self-employed borrowers do. Don't tell me that you grossed 1.3 million in your construction business last week and that you made $128,000 because I've been around a lot of contractors grossing 500 to 800,000, making two or 300,000 a year. And it's like, and, and you have a $5,000 a month house payment, right? But you're only making 10 grand a month. So it's, but how do you get past all of that? That's my conversation about, this is the perfect time of year. Hey Kenny, I know that it's gonna change things for you. You showed that you made 100 grand in 2018. You told me that you took 20,000 a month out of there. I know it'd probably be hard for you tax-wise, but if you want to buy a $1.8 million house, you need to show that $230,000 income this year, it's not going to happen. It's like, holy crap, man, that means I got to pay $40,000, $50,000 in taxes. That means you're not buying a house. So, now those are pretty extravagant numbers, but those are the conversations that we have to have. So, just working our way down through the greatness tracker, and then I'm going to talk about scripting and why we have theme days and who you're supposed to call. Now this is core stuff, so you can mix it up. Mix it up, I'm not gonna come and say, hey, you did or didn't do this on a particular day. So we've got our face-to-faces, lunches, 60 great phone calls, a couple of meetings. I send out videos, okay? Now I send out about 3,000 to 3,000 people a week. And I, and, and I think, out of you use bomb bomb, right? I think? Does anybody here know what BombBomb Bomb is? So it's a video portal. Um, it's about 550 bucks a year. If more than one of you uses it, there's a discount on it. But um, you can do a video of 35 or 40 seconds and you can text it to somebody. But at about a minute and a half to two minutes, you start losing the opportunity, especially if you want to send it out to five or six people, your text won't let you send it. You can hit send all you want, it won't go. So it renders your video into a, a, a format where you can text it or email it to multiple people without it being hurt, which is really cool. Um, it could be something as simple as, because uh, I'll pick on you for me, is she's, she's just right here. Hey, it's free, Joe. I, I'm like, gosh, I just talked to your lender, and your loan's approved. The appraisal came in today, and they're going to be drawing some documents, and they're going to be sending you a closing disclosure. And I just want you to know that when you get it, the moment you execute that closing disclosure, three days after that, you're going to be able to probably sign your loan documents if everything goes right. Congratulations again. I know you and your wife, Sophie, are going to be so excited. And uh, I just, if you, if you need anything, let me know. And you send that video. Now, when do you send videos to people? It's around 9.30 or 10 o'clock in the morning because when, when you do that, let me see if I can find something here. Um, and I'll, I'll give you an idea. Why 9.30 in the morning? Okay. Um, You're checking their Facebook? <laughs> see, a lot of people... All right, everybody. It is that of year. April 15th is almost like it's tomorrow. Mitchell Chernock, American Pacific Mortgage in lovely downtown Venetia. Don't forget, I got my apply now button. It's going to be either down there or up there. But you know what? We're getting tax refunds. I hope you are. But I want to talk to you about those refunds. Most people get refunds because the government's holding money they shouldn't be. Now, hang on for one second. Now, that's about the fact that I have a client who called me and she has $27,000 in a refund that's due here this Friday. I said, 27 grand. She goes, I know. I should change my deductions and have that money every month and deposit it, use it, deposit it, use it. I said, well, for you, that might be true. Another person 
that two thousand dollars might get spent. Right. The reason I have showed you that is you're not sitting at your desk with your earpods in when you're in the typing pool or you're a salesperson for IBM. So you're going to play this out loud. And Kenny's going to look over, what are you listening to? My realtor just sent me this incredible message. I'm getting my house. It's like, you get a video? My realtor hasn't called me in three weeks. It's like, Kenny, you're trying to buy a house? And you haven't heard from your agent in three weeks? You need to call my agent Adam, man. This guy's on it. Matter of fact, I'm going to call him right now and tell him he needs to talk with you. And believe me, people will be your cheerleaders. They do this stuff. It really happens. I mean, it just really does. So the reason you send it in the morning is people are usually at their business desk. And if they are listening to it quietly and you send them something that's really incredible, because you don't send an email, a, a video going, well, guess what, Schmo? Yeah, you know what is that, that your, your dirtbag credit and, and, and the way that you talked to the, the seller when you were at his house and told him you hated the kitchen but now you want to buy it. That's a text message. Yeah. 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 Or a it voicemail. Is, is people want to share, right? Now I know that it's kind of funny, we also have water coolers, right? Mm -hmm. I mean I have one in my office, it's a filtered one. Uh, so I don't have bottles everywhere because everybody in my office is like totally crazy in ecology. So it's like we don't want a bunch of plastic. But when Kenny walks up to the water cooler and I'm standing there and go, hey man, didn't you tell me a couple weeks ago you were thinking about buying a house? Oh, I got one this weekend. And it's like, I'm going, wow. My agent didn't even call me on a Friday. Now I'm going to make a joke here, so it's not a joke really. It's Kenny's like, my realtor called me to show me houses, but my lender called me on Thursday and said he already called my realtor and said if he wasn't taking me out to show me houses, we were both crazy. So I went out and I found a house and I bought it. So I, you just need to know that I call every Thursday and Friday for every TBD or client that I have, and if they're already qualified and not looking, it's like, why aren't you looking? Is Kenny here? Does he have an associate that can show you property? Oh, I, you know, I've just been putting it off. i got stuff with the kids. It's like, whoa, you know what? You know what's coming? Is it really? Are we less than 30 days away from spring? We really are. Yeah. And we're, what, a week away from time change. I hate that lost hour. It always makes me insane. But Mark is coming. All. Do you, want, do you, want, to, do you want to buy a house right now and compete against almost nobody? Or do you want to try and buy a house in May and have 10 offers mm -hmm. and you might have to pay more? Let's see if it's even happening now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know that it's completely stopped, which is kind of creepy. Yeah, and it's just, you know, it's kind of never. Yeah. But it's just gonna, yeah. but it's just gonna get more intense. So. Well, so if we, it's very difficult to talk about things happening in the world in an affirmative way when they are not good things. And coming from medicine, um, and and not being a really young guy anymore, I have no idea how I would be if I got sick. And that's another thing that I'll talk to you about: being physically well and taking great care of yourself. Is the coronavirus? Um, uh, is now probably worse than SARS, uh, worse than the Philippine flu, worse than the Hong Kong flu. Um, but even the words pandemic, which is not the same as an epidemic, pandemic is more regionalized or provincial, is it's freaking out the marketplaces. And so the stock market, after incredibly record earnings, is still off 900 points today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. That 900 points has transcribed itself into this. So you can just pass this around, okay? So that that green right there, that's a mortgage bond, okay? So mortgage bonds are up today. The difference in a stock going up is it's more expensive. When mortgage bonds go up and they become more expensive, the yield inside the bond goes down. So rates went down today. Actually, they went down every day last week by little tiny bits. But to give you an idea of how much they've gone down, I have a jumbo lender that goes to a million with 5% down, and I locked somebody on Friday at 3.5% at a quarter of a point oh, wow. on a jumbo loan with 5% down, a $950,000 mortgage. So when you're talking with people and they go, oh my God, what's going on in the world? It's like, it's a horrible thing. But Joe? You're saying that your mom had a really high interest rate? She can probably refinance. Joe, you're saying that you couldn't afford a house last year? 
What if it turns out that today, even though the house has gone up in value, that it's more affordable now? Let me make sure you're on the right spot, Scott. Yeah. yeah. So that's so. And by the way, 20 basis points is 20 out of 100, right? So loans travel in eighths, right? Mm -hmm. So 20 basis points would actually, if you had a $400,000 mortgage and we were pricing exactly into the market and we hadn't priced it yet, it would be $800 less today to get that mortgage than it was on credit. Or that might let us go to a lower interest rate. So, um, and I, I watch this stuff all the time. Um, in this system, there's a rent versus buy um, that it literally has four places that you populate. So if Martha called me up and said, I got this guy, he's paying $3,000 a month in rent, I can't get him to buy a house, is can you send me something? Is I'll send you a rent versus buying. It does a nine year, I don't know why, nine year, I don't know why it does a nine year projection, but it's a nine year projection. And it shows where his house payment is this, the equity is this, the mortgage is this, and the rent is this. So in nine years, there's about, on a $3,000 rent, there's about a $950 to $1,000 difference between your costs and zero equity. Mm -hmm. It always lends me to talk about renting because in the 1950s and 1960s, when there was a predominant amount of renters, it was so that Martha and I could be sitting in our house and go, no, oh, I just don't want to live in Omaha anymore. Now let's give 30 days notice and let's move to Nevada. Well, let's go to Oregon. Well, let's go to Florida. We'll go visit my parents and see how they are. And, no, no, no. Uh, but it was about upward mobility. Everything is about ownership today. Ownership, ownership, ownership. And, you know, that Adam and Kenny, in terms of being your senior mentors, would tell you in your experiences, depending on the marketplace and where you buy and how you buy, if you want to move, you just rent out your house and move. Chances are it's going to be got a big, huge negative cash flow like it would have been. So, and these are all just conversations that we're having about our clients and what we're doing. So let me just get down to the bottom of this and then we're going to go through a couple of things. So I send out a lot of videos. By the way, about 90% of my videos are single shot videos because when you make a mistake in a video, it's usually a word mistake. You mispronounce a word or do something, and your client is going to smile and know that that video was sent to them on a one shot. It's not rehearsed, and it's you. It's, you. it's just a person. Yeah. Okay? Um, there's hours prospecting. When yours looks a little bit different than mine uh, because there's a brand new one that just came out. You must, you have to be on the phone a minimum of 10 hours a week. Okay? So I asked you, you know, how you start your Monday, right? Now, if your office meeting starts at 10.30, what would happen to you if you got up, and no matter what was happening, you got up Monday morning, and from 8 to 10 a.m., you made phone calls? And then you come to your office meeting here. First of all, you'd be on fire. You might have a listing appointment. You might have a buyer appointment. You might have made a brand new relationship. You might have gotten a referral. Okay? Uh, so that's super important. Face-to-face -face prospecting is really important. Um, I was talking to a lender the other day, I'm recruiting him, I said, how are you still doing your business? He said, well, I still do pop buys. I hate that conversation. But I said, you mean you're dropping into real estate offices unannounced to people that you don't know and walking up and saying hello? Okay. I said, oh, that's why you've got that thing tattooed on your head that says, lender, don't talk to me. I'm bothering you. I'm bothering you. Is your time must be well invested invite somebody into your life or make it so that they'll invite you into theirs. But just don't show up. But if you show up at your buyer's office with balloons and a cake that says congratulations on, the, on your 70th birthday or congratulations on buying a home, that's totally different. Those are really cool things. Well, you have it delivered, right? It's like, so why is why is Joe's desk got all that stuff on it? Oh, his house keys just right that old thing. Is real, right? So, how many of you think that you actually prospect and work? And I'm just, we'll just use 40, because we know that there's more than that. How many of you actually think you prospect or work in real estate in the actual 40 hours a week, where you're working, calling people, arranging documents, 
pre-qualifying people, viewing homes. Mm -hmm. Viewing homes is really important. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many of you think you actually do that? So, and by the way, that's that's amazing to have this many people in the room and have you be that honest. No, yeah, you could you could look at the other side and say you're not doing it. Right? But the fact is, is for you to be that honest is um, it's what you find out. right. So I'm looking at, uh, I'm reading a book called uh, Atomic Habits right now. How many of you do books on tape right now? Or, okay. It's, uh, <laughs> no, it's really easy for me because I train every morning. So I just put it on and I listen to it while I'm working out. Uh, but it's totally changed my life. Atomic Habits sounds really interesting, but he's using the word atomic, but he's talking about an atom. If you make changes in your life that are imperceptible to other people, but you know that you're making a change, Getting up at a quarter to six instead of six. Mm -hmm. Eating oatmeal in, in instead of uh, uh, meat or something in the morning. Or how to change in your diet. Little tiny things that you know that you're doing. Studying for 15 minutes a day. Getting in your car and driving home. And if it's not safe for you, I'll say one instead of five. Get in your car and you already have a target. And you get in your car. And let's just say mine is Kenny. I'm going to call Kenny. I'm going to get in my car, and I'm going to drive home, and I'm going to call Kenny. And I'm going to call a Kenny person every single afternoon between 5 and 6 p.m. on my way home. It's five extra calls. It's the end of the day. Right? You get to say a lot of things to people. How are you? How did you do? How did your day go? How was your business? Hey, I, I, I know that you're a CPA. This time of year must be insane. Do you, do you ever get out? Do you ever... Are you taking care of yourself right now, going into tax time? Oh my God, my boss is on me. And, you know, if you if you had 20 minutes, where would you go right now? Where would you go right now? What would you do? Oh, I would go here. Great. Can I pick you up at three o'clock tomorrow and, and take you down the street to that place? Really? No, I'll come by. I'll pick you up. I'm going to make you do this. You, you can't you can't sit in those numbers that long. Anybody knows it when you're in numbers like that, you're more likely to make a mistake. Right? By the way, it lends itself to that 20 minutes around 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon where you actually shut your eyes and meditate. And just take a few minutes, remind yourself that you're a consummate professional and a great human being, uh, that it, it changes your life. So, thank you cards. I have 11 on here. My coach is going to look at this, and, I, and it's hard to lie, right? I have 11 thank you cards on here. I got 15 leads last week. I should have sent out 15 thank you cards because they all came from different people. Some of the leads I already spoke with and I didn't send them thank you cards. Last week was a pretty crazy week. So my coach would ask me about that on my next coaching call, which is this Thursday, is it'd be, hey, you know what? I, I had too much going on. Now he might say to me, how many deals are you closing in March? And I would tell him, he'd say, you know, you do another month like that, you need to hire somebody else. You cannot miss thank you because nobody sends them. <coughs> it, I'm going to jump around a little bit. What's the best time of the day to call somebody that's a client, friend, or a close associate and wish them happy birthday? What's the best time of the day? Morning. 7 a.m. Now, I know that's a little bit crazy because you're getting your kids ready to go to school. Kenny, I just, I just, I had to call you and wish you a happy birthday. You may be the only person, not even his wife or his friends will remember that day, or his wife already said it to them, said it to him on the way downstairs to make breakfast for the kids and do everything else. That was, hey, honey, happy birthday, right? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> and uh, so, you might be the only person to do it. I had a guy the other day said to me, I, I, I went to the board of realtors. He helps me run governmental affairs. He goes, I got your birthday notification. I said, that was a really cool one, huh? And he goes, how many of those do you send out? And I said, that one goes out only for the month of February. He goes, it's pretty automated. I said, you know what's really cool about it? Is you opened it, and you knew it came from me, and you knew that if I personally called you, it would have been better. He goes, I would have appreciated a phone call. That was Johnny Walker. I said, I, his name is Johnny Walker. Right? <laughs> and uh, I, I said, yeah, I, I, I should have called him. So thank you cards, birthday cards. So leads, um, how many of you are in this business less than a year? Okay, just you, okay, uh, and you, okay. One week. One week, mm -hmm. awesome. Oh, <laughs> now what business did you come from? 
Uh, I still do, uh, I have a small business of uh, medical transportation, medical transportation. Oh, medical transportation? Yeah, not, not emergency medical transportation. Oh, very neat. Yes. How long have you been doing that? Uh, seven years. Seven years. So, you know, coming from the medical profession, when you do what you're talking about, it's a succession, right? It's like, I delivered a patient to this place, and this person took that person, right? Might it be a nurse, it might be a CNA at a convalescent hospital or whatever. How, what changes when you know every single person that you're delivering a patient to? Oh, changes a lot. You right. Know, they keep asking for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like, they like your service. It's like, hey, I, I'm sorry, what's your first name again? I'm Mark. I'm Mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I, I gosh, you know, we gotta, we got to pick up Joe, Joe Schmo from, from this convalescent hospital, have him delivered to a hospital. Oh, we, please call him, Mark. Not only will he be early, even if the guy's in a coma, he'll be laughing because he's got a great sense of humor. When they say stuff like that, <laughs> yeah, it's true, right? Yeah. So is, it's like when you go to your Pete's Coffee or your Starbucks, is, <laughs> <if you, laughs> no, I, I don't like Starbucks coffee, but that's okay. Um, so when you, when, you, when you do stuff like that, and you start, you drive up, and you present your folder, and it says, here is Mr. Jones, uh, nurse, it is Joanne. I am so glad you're on this morning. This patient just really needs somebody like you. And so you get him in, Joanne wheels him in, you're getting ready to leave, she comes up and she says goodbye to you, and you go, hey, you know what? I've run this company, it's, it's a love for me. And I want you to, I've made a massive career decision as well, and I'm involved in real estate, and I'd like an opportunity to talk to you about that. You think you and I could maybe have coffee and talk to you about my new business venture and what I'm doing? She might go, oh my God, you're not going to leave me, are you? Not yet, but I, I want to grow a real estate business. And because you know these people, right? So you give your business card to the Starbucks barista, and some guy walks up right after that, and it's like, yeah, give me this. And it's like, God, you're not in a happy mood today. Oh, I've just got a bunch of stuff going on, and maybe your barista is an ex-hairdresser, and she knows how to talk to people. It's like, tell me what's going on. There's nobody in line. Oh, my gosh, I was trying to buy a house, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, that guy that just walked out of here, Mark, he's a realtor. You should talk to him. Because if you're not having a good time, you need to have fun by him. State. It needs to be a, a really great experience. So this is about how many people you get to know. The people who know the most people win, right? So on the bottom is leads. How many leads does an average realtor need to close one transaction? Does anybody know? Anybody know? Ten. So it's ten leads to get to one, which is true, but it's one lead who wants to buy. Right? So everybody in here, if you went out and you went to a board of realtors meeting, and let's say you went to the Contra Costa one and sat there and said, how many of you sold a house from an open house the very day that you did it, which is how I lost Mark Dietrich, okay? Probably half the room would raise their hand. It only takes one. Mm -hmm. The reason that it takes 10 is that one is usually not the first one. But what if you've got 10 <laughs> leads in a mind? And by the way, these are organic leads. These are not Zillow leads or anything. These are leads that come from your friends, your business partners, people that you know in your life, sister, mother, father, brother, aunt, uncle, best friend, business partner, investment counsel, so on, right? Is each one of those leads is a potential new lead for you. God, I'm really sorry, Joe, that your lender said that you're not going to be ready to buy for a year. Yeah, but you know what? You gave me a plan and everything. I'm going to stay in touch with you, too, because I want to give you an out-of-the-box experience, and I want you to realize that even though you can't buy yet, I am here all the time for any questions. If it turns out you need to change rent and, and go rent somewhere, I can help you with that, um, because my ultimate goal is to treat you so well that I'm on the top of your mind when anybody says those two magic words of real estate. Is that, can I do that with you? Is that okay? And that's your, your role play. And when you do that, people are thinking you have to be in a transaction with somebody or close the deal to get a referral from them. That's totally untrue. So 
By the way, if anybody needs to take a break, because, well, I'm really going, and anybody have any questions, only we'll back any, any thoughts or anything? No, I think we long, long seat. Oh, this one? The other one. Oh, this one, yeah. yeah. Just the second one. No, that's okay. So, this is the Bible, so to speak. By the way, the guy that runs this organization is an extremely spiritual guy. Um, I have a dashboard um, that I'm responsible for every two weeks. On my dashboard um, is how many new realtors I met, how many office managers I met. And then the bottom of it, which I don't know why they put it on this form, is my gifting and your number one client. Who knows who their number one client is? Who's your number one client every day of the week? Thank you. You're a smart guy. So, so there's gifting on there. So every two weeks you buy a gift for your spouse. Now, if you're doing the five love languages, the gift doesn't have to be an expensive gift or even a money gift. Okay. I mean, we've but all done. Get it. It's got a special. No. It's got a special. No. You don't use ears. Why, Adam? I was trying to hide behind the pillow here. <laughs> She's right there. But well, she needs to get it too, and she will do that for you. Oh, she will do that for her. She's got to buy a gift for me too. It's even worse now. <laughs> I, think, I think you have two persons here who are in their hot seat. Yeah. One is Adam, and my wife just told me, I'm looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm not, so not so going to tell you. By the way, I don't know if you I know. know I know, I know. I met you both when you were exactly. here at the party. And, and I thought we were friends. I know. Oh my God! Yeah, but that is, if you don't have that book, get it. Yeah, it's a great book. Well, um, uh, I'm really you don't even have to be married. So, so yeah. you don't. No, you don't, because you know what? Is there's one for your kids. There's one, one for your office. Okay. I mean, I, I had a couple of my office staff do it um, and take the test, and one of them was physical touch. Was a zero. And I'm like, I'm like, how do you, how do you fill out something that's a questionnaire? And physical touch is not one of your love languages. But she's totally, totally acts of service and 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 words of affirmation. So now there's all kinds of things. You're supposed to be um, in business, and I can't remember who said it. It's 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 either like John Maxwell or somebody. It's ten to one. Right? They tell you ten great things, and I say, What the hell is wrong with you? You made a mistake. But if I start off with the mistake, the 10 great things don't mean it. Mm -hmm. So words of affirmation are important. Um, when we started having Peyton full time, started making the beds every single morning and making my wife coffee and doing all of those things that she, so she doesn't have to do them, right? Are those things uh, words of affirmation? No, those are no, acts of service. service. So, but they are included, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank God. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm saved. Were well, you guys getting this from the five languages of love? Yeah. 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 <laughs> the thing about your clients is, is, is that when we're with our clients, if, if we get a chance to meet them in person, we can kind of a little bit discover where they're at, right? Um, uh, it's like for men and women, it's the same. If I'm meeting Adam, and I'm right about right here, this is where, where the, the, the meeting starts. I don't know who Adam is. He's looking at me, and I walk over, and I've got my hand out right here, okay? Which is totally different than if I'm right here, he's like, was this guy going to hit me? Okay? So you always put your hand out about seven to eight feet. Hey, man, because you're welcoming, right? You look at yep. eyes. Yes. No. Yes, in your eyes. In your eyes, man. So, 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 I believe that part of this came from the Caesars. Um, is you have one hand behind your back, and your hand out. You said this hand might have a knife, so or a sword. So when you when you meet somebody, this hand is out too, in welcoming, and you do it. And that was so that people knew that you were not an enemy, right? It's it's there's all kinds Body, of yeah. Yeah, you count seventeen hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Very cool. I like that. And it's it's a very true thing. Mm -hmm. um, so. Let's talk about Mondays. Mondays for realtors are VIP days. For me, 
So like this morning, I made about eight calls. That's all I made this morning, because I, I, I had a meeting at my office. And there's a meeting going on there now. So, and my partner's doing it. Is I make 40 realtor calls every Monday. I have about a, huh? How many? 40. I have about 100 realtors that I know that I want to do business with, and I call about 40 of them every Monday. And I rotate it a little bit depending on the conversation and what's going on, whether or not we're actually doing business together or whatever. For realtors, it's VIPs. Anybody can tell me what a VIP is, besides a very important person? Describe a VIP in your life. Somebody that's serious, that has a, um, maybe an exclusive with you, and... You know, they're, uh, they have a loan approved already, or? So that's that's actually a client, okay. but that client could be a VIP, okay. but that client may have come from a VIP. Okay. And a VIP is somebody that you designate as an important person. So there's a guy that I met, and I'm having fun trying to develop a relationship with him. His name is Mark Walter. Mark Walter is the guy that secured several hundred thousand square feet of rental space for Paramount Pictures on Mare Island, which has now become Paramount North. They shot Bumblebee out there. They're shooting uh, 13 Reasons Why. There's about four or five more movies going on out there. But because Mark Walter's out there, he's also come in contact with the people who do Savage and Cook. They're mega millionaire investors and people who are doing a distillery out there. And there's another company called Factory OS. Factory OS builds modular buildings, and they literally put up a building because the foundation was done in Berkeley in 10 days instead of 10 months. So they're out there. So there's VIPs are people that you get to know, and you call them, and you get what's called in the flow. Hey, I've got a guy. He's a great CPA. Does he do your taxes? No. He's just a great CPA, and I've gotten to know him. I got this guy at Edward Jones. He's the most amazing. He's the most amazing investment advisor. Does he invest for you? No, because you can't do business with everybody. But he's an amazing guy, and I call him all the time. So I have a guy whose name is Chris Manzi, and he does financial planning work behind the scenes of this guy who sells life insurance for MetLife. But Chris doesn't sell life insurance. I got an email from him yesterday. I have I have new clients. They want to buy their first house sometime in April or May. Can you give them a call? But I've never done business with Chris. I met him through some friends of mine, and we just talk every couple of weeks. I call him and ask him how things are going. I mean, if you call an investment advisor right now, say, hey, you know, I just want to get an idea. What are you advising your clients with what's going on in the world, this virus thing that's going on? Our stock market is at really lofty heights. Um, there's a whole bunch of things happening with trade. How do you see things? And you get a nice little tutorial from them on what's going on. Say, hey, can I share any of that information? How would I share this information? And, and you share it with somebody. And that person, you say, hey, you know, I've got this guy, Chris Manzi. I don't know. You know, you're, you're working for IBM. You've got a 401k. But do you do any outside investing on your own? Yeah. How would you rate your investment advisor? Uh, maybe a 5 or a 6. Hey, this guy could be an 8 or 9 or a 10. Can I give him your number and have him call you? Or can I at least have you call him and let him know? And now you're referring people. It's not about whether or not they're going to do business. It's about creating relationships. So Monday is VIP day, but yours is different than mine. I call 40 realtors. Monday, that 50 VIPs is just 12. Even if you were able to talk to somebody for five minutes each and have a quality conversation, how long is 12? One hour, right? So if you started making calls at 8, you could actually be done between 9 and 9.30, and you would have called 12 people, invited them out to coffee, and by the way, I'll give you some stuff to invite some financial people to that's webinars that my company does, mostly about reverse mortgages, because most people don't know about it. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're, they actually come with a, a CE for, for financial planners and folks. Uh, but you invite them. Hey, I want to invite you out to coffee. I've got a group of friends I'm going out with. None of them have an investment advisor. Or all of them have an investment advisor and want somebody else to hear from. I don't know that it's a great idea to call up and talk to Sherman um, in Venetia and, and have him sit down with a group of friends and have a conversation because Sherman owns Pasolaco Funeral Home. 
<laughs> but the fact is, is, how many people are prepared for that? Yep. Right. So tomorrow is Tuesday, um, and it's five weeks tomorrow that my daughter's husband passed away. Oh. It was not un it was not unexpected, but it was definitely unexpected when it happened. They were together off and on for 30 years. Um, they decided in 2010 that they were going to have a permanent relationship. They've been talking about getting married, which when you have two procrastinators, it ends up being 2019. Um, so they got married on July 31st, or July 27th, I think that was a Saturday. On August 4th, which was the following Friday, um, he started having some speech problems. So 59. And my daughter's like, maybe you're having a stroke. Unfortunately, he had an extremely rare brain tumor. Oh. And, and so that's how fast he went. Oh the thing is, is that they had no preparation for anything, even though they'd known each other for a very long time. And, uh, and so everybody kind of circled around them to help that happen. Right? Uh, the only reason I'm bringing that up is in coaching material, even Buffini and everything, they will tell you to talk to funeral home directors. Right? Because he's going to know, you know that the wife or husband is not going to continue to live in that house. He's going to know that maybe they don't have enough money to do a funeral, but they want to sell their home and they've got an estate. He's going to know that mom and dad left you a house and you have no idea what to do with it. It might be a strange relationship, but they're just regular people like we are. We're just running a different business. So doctors, lawyers, CPAs, investment advisors, funeral home directors, you walk in. So you go to your CVS pharmacy, and the pharmacist is the same person you see every single month and you pick up your prescriptions, or you go to buy stuff, or whatever it is that you're doing, and you get to know the pharmacist. And you tell her, hey, you know something? You've got a great business here. You take great care of people. I run a real estate business. I know it's a totally different product, but I'd like to get together sometime. I need to know more business professionals like you. Well, the one thing we know about a pharmacist is they, they didn't become a pharmacist by, by being trained to become one. They went to school. Mm -hmm. So they have alumni. Right? So when somebody tells you what college they went to, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I went, to UC, I went to UC Berkeley. Oh, my gosh. My daughter's boyfriend is going to Berkeley right now. What did you do? You immediately create this, this relationship. Right? Mm -hmm. So VIPs are super important people that you may do business with, but more likely you're calling on them and you're introducing yourself to them so that you can exchange referrals. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, um, this has on here a birthday program. I have a very small birthday program. The one that's automated is only kind of corny. Um, but I do call as many people per week as I can. I actually had the Board of Realtors send me their birthday list every single month, and I try to go through that list. You're not going to ever hear me use the word try very often, but this one is a try. This one is a try. And I'll just pick up the phone and call realtors I don't even know. I say, hey, man, it's Mitchell from American Pacific Mortgage. I'm the governmental affairs guy for your Board of Realtors. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. It's like, whoa, man, thank you. Hey, how long have you been in the business? What are you doing? All right. So Monday is VIP day. How many of you think that if you've got a, and, and, I, and I can help you by the way, I, I can interview you on the phone, and in probably 20 or 30 minutes we can come up with 12 super great people that you've come in contact with that you would ordinarily not call. Okay. But I can help you do that. You think that you could figure out a way on a Monday morning, or let's say Monday afternoon if you've got a lot going on, because I, I don't want to affect your schedule so much, but on a Monday you're going to pick up the phone, and you're going to set aside an hour and a half to two hours and start your week by creating appointments and, and advisory type things that you're going to be doing. So, does anybody think they can do that? Yes. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think it's really important that you commit to it. Um, and I'll check in with you, but I promise you that if you call me and say, hey, I'm not really sure who to call yet, in, in, a, in a short conversation, I will find out stuff. Um, uh, my daughter cuts hair in Venetia, and about 20 of her clients are my clients and or realtors. But also, one of her clients is the principal of the school that my great-granddaughter goes to. So I get to see her all the time. And, and so and I get to see them. And, and so you have this relationship. 
It's like if you have kids in school, parent-teacher night is not always for your kid, right? It can be for both of you. You get to know that teacher, you know. Um, you know, everybody is, you know, the, the, the butcher, the baker, and the candlestick maker. But I'm the professional realtor, right? So that's how you're going to put yourself out there. So that's Mondays. Um, Tuesdays is kind of interesting. For, for If you're brand new in the business, you just carry over from Monday. Uh, people don't like to make cold calls, which is why you call folks. But Tuesdays is status calls. So if you're in a transaction with me, and you're the listing and the selling agent and title, I'm going to call the three of you and update you what's going on. Hey, the appraisal's in. we got a loan approval. Um, uh, what happened on Friday, um, we, we've got a, a husband um, who uh, 20 years ago missed a bunch of child support, and a, uh, and title re-ran a title search because the husband's not going in our deal, but she ran the title search on the husband, and it pulled up a old child support loan. So it's already paid for. He's, he's going down to prove it. But the fact is, is we were supposed to fund today, and we're not. We're going to fund tomorrow because he had to get it taken care of. And it just, and it just showed up. So, and I don't know why title missed that one, but uh, and and sometimes stuff is just going to show up at different times. But if you're, so I call my title agent, I call my listing agent, hey man, here's where we're at, or woman, and uh, we're getting ready to close this week, or thank you so much for getting the Jones's offer accepted. I know you had five offers. And I can't tell you how many times in the last few months I've heard, yeah, yours was not the highest offer, it was the best offer. Because we know that a house won't appraise, and the people that came in over don't have enough money to pay the cash difference on the appraisal, so we accepted your offer. Thank you so much. That's awesome. Here's how I work. I'm going to be calling you every single Tuesday. I might give you a Friday video update. I'm definitely going to call you as soon as the appraisal comes in. I'm going to get a notification as soon as I have a loan approval. You're never going to have to look for me unless you have a question about something after I've given you uh, an update. And you would do the same thing. Sure. That's a pretty good picture. Um, so, status calls. You know, you got to obviously have clients. But if you have clients and they're not in contract, you're still going to do a status call with them. You're going to call them and say, hey, we didn't go out and look at houses this last weekend. Right? How do we get this to go? You know, your, your lender called me, you're approved for 500000 Tell me what might be stopping you from looking. Well, we've been looking and we don't see anything. Well, that's awesome. That means there's two of us looking. I actually have a couple of houses I'd like you to see, and I also have a couple of neighborhoods that right now don't have anything for sale, but I just need to get a better feel for what you want to buy. And that serves two purposes. My job as a lender is to protect the Corinthian leather of your back seat, right? You don't want any unapproved people in your back seat. Which leads me to something else. I was talking to an agent on Friday, and uh, he's kind of a non-traditional guy, and um, he said he was showing this client property on Saturday, and I said, that's incredible. I said, that's great. I've been trying to get him out. He goes, I'm going to be meeting him. I said, where are you going to meet him? He goes, at the house. I said, why would you do that? And he goes, because it's simple. I said, really? I said, if you're meeting him at the property and you don't really know this person, how are you ever going to develop a relationship with him unless they're in the back seat of your car? Or well, if it's one person in the front seat, okay? You have coffee, you go out, you look at stuff. Hey, Kenny, I'm so glad that I was able to meet with you this morning and pick you up. I'm going to go look at a couple of houses and I'm going to take you to a few neighborhoods. And just for the heck of it, because you're approved in that 500 to, 600, 500 to 600 range, there's a couple of brand new subdivisions out here, and we booked out about three hours. Would you mind if I drove you by and, and showed you some brand new houses? Now, why would I do that? Anybody know? That way, when the buyer walks in there without you, you're not getting aced. Right? People buy new houses. Yeah. And it's so, it's like, I am so tired of looking at all these old houses. And it's like, honey, you saw that Shea development sign. It's okay, yeah, we're for a hundred. Uh, I, I saw that Shea development sign. Let's go by. 
Oh, isn't that the place that Kenny took us by? Yeah, but you know what? I just, I just want to go back and look at those new houses. Now, you know, having somebody call you and say, hey, I just wrote up an offer for your buyer and we're going to send you a 3% commission check is not the same as, hey, Kenny, how's it going? And, uh, uh, my wife and I bought a house this weekend at that Shea Development. Which one? You know, the one up the street that you never showed us? Mm -hmm. Right? So, that's cool stuff. You're, you're gonna, for that stuff, it's newhomesource.com. Yeah. Uh, if, you, if you don't know who they are, the only ones that are not on there is going to be like, uh, there's one, uh, uh, D.R. Horton's not on there. Uh, yeah. Uh, newhomesource.com. New now, here's the other thing. It's, it's really prevalent around here, and, and uh, you know, especially like if you drive up uh, in the last 15 years, because I'm not here for a long time, is if you drive up Retreat Boulevard mm -hmm. when it turns into Geary is I can't tell you how many vacant lots are there with all kinds of little subdivisions. Those are small time developers, but they'll steal your buyer just as fast as anybody, right? Mm -hmm. So you just register, you just go and say, hey, I brought a buyer by. Uh, so it's just about keeping your buyer in the loop. Um, so Tuesday is Saturday. That's a very nice way to get a commission, by the way. Yes, yeah. Because you show it to them and yeah. you don't touch them again, except to check in and how, yeah. how is it going. Yeah. To end in the check. It's, it's an amazing thing to do. I have a, a, a realtor friend of mine, um, this is a while back, but he signed somebody up for an $800,000 house. Uh, just took them in and, and they were like, there's just no way we're ever going to buy this house. Well, their house sold for more. And they went back to that subdivision without the agent. But they called him and, and they said, hey, uh, the agent wants to know exactly how you use your information in this contract. And he goes, where are you? He says, I'm at this, let's just say this Shea development. Oh, you're buying that property. It was, it was a 2.5% commission on an $800,000 house. It's 20 grand. And they sent that check. Well, he's not the broker, so they sent it to his office. But he didn't have to do anything, but he kept in touch with that agent. And there's one thing that no subdivision agent will ever, ever do. Does anybody know what that is? Ask you when they have a realtor. No, no, they do that. No, they do that. Uh, sometimes. They're not going to list property. If you make a relationship with a new home person, whether you ever sell houses there or not, and they're like, ah, you know what, it's, it's in Concord, and say, you know what, we, we just talked to this guy, Kenny. He comes in here every two weeks. He always checks on us. He wants to know how inventory is going. He wants to know if we have any inventory properties that we can sell. This guy would be a great guy to list your property. He probably knows a lot about your area, and now, that subdivision agent is giving you out as a listing agent. So this is all about creating this, this relationships and momentum, right? Um, am I doing okay? I don't yeah. want to uh, yeah. go too far with everybody here, so cool. So Wednesday is hot leads and old leads. Um, so I want to get back to what Faria and I were talking about, is how do you get 10 leads a month? is a great question for a realtor, right? Because as a lender, if I've got product, and as a realtor, if you've got product, you get sign calls, right? Sure. <laughs> so, anybody here, tell me the best way to get leads when you're brand new in this business. What's the best way, besides phone calls? Door knocking, door knocking, talking to people. Saturdays and Sundays. How's that as a clue? Going out, having fun. Open houses. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Saturday and having fun. What's up, having fun. How are you training this girl? <laughs> having fun. There you go, yeah. Open houses, too. Yes. Open houses. Fun. Fun. In open houses. Now, let's just say, I'm going to, this is not going to sound the way I want Mitchell, it. Mitchell, I did an open house with Suresh and yeah. I had a blast. Oh, good for you. It was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. I want to continue to do that. It, it was a lot was of fun. Was that because Suresh is a phenomenal storyteller? Or? Yes, that too. But we had, we had a such I mean, a great... I can just look at you and know yeah. that you're like, yeah. We had such a great know. property, and yeah. we just... We had we had we, we actually stayed an hour and a half later. later. Than the oh, wow. Period. Good for you. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 have, I, I... You know, when you talk about people, sometimes they're gone. So I don't know if anybody here ever met Chris Powell, and you might have, because he was a Venetia guy. So, so Chris was a realtor um, in the 1980s, 
and, uh, and became a Better Homes Manager for Richard Bordelazzo <coughs> um, in Venetia, and then became a Caldwell Banker Manager for him, and then went and became a manager for Remax. Now, that's a great transition because he got away from doing more traditional real estate, but he had a nice uh, group of investors, so he probably did about 20 transactions a year. Okay. But he did a lot more than that when he got started. He did 149 and 49 open houses his first year and closed over 40 transactions as a realtor. Okay. Now, you got to remember, that's the 80s. Right? Uh, Prices are a little bit less expensive. Real estate doesn't have this big craziness going on about it like it does right now. But um, I have a friend of mine, his name is Frank Mazuka. He's a Better Homes agent, Better Homes and Gardens in Walnut Creek. I don't know if you know Frankie. So he's around the corner from the Stead dealerships right there and right up, uh, on Parkside near the Marriott. He did that open house this weekend with one of my associates out of my office that works only for me, one of my team. And this is kind of strange, so it's not usually, but he got nine leads, nine buyer leads. Okay. These are people that said, yeah, I wouldn't mind having a lender give me a call. Some of them are people that already had a lender, but they're knowing the market is so crazy that, that they're willing to meet with somebody. So if I got nine leads, that also means that Frank got nine leads, right? So leads come from a lot of different places. They come from asking for them. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about earning the right to ask. Nobody earns a referral, even if you get one. You earn the right to ask for one. So if, if Kenny gives me a referral and I didn't ask him, it's still I earned the right to ask him for one. It's just he preempted it because I might have done something that caused him to think, wow, this is great. i got to work with Mitchell. I've got to work with Suresh or Mara or, or Free or Angela. And I'll get everybody's name and date and Martha, <laughs> and I'll make my way around the room eventually. Is, is that the referral side is once you get the lead, what do you do with it, right? So let's say you only got one lead. Um, uh, do ever, does anybody know the story about the one penny doubled every day? Yep. Okay, so you do. So, so I could offer Kenny a million dollars, and I could offer Martha a penny doubled every single day. So Kenny takes his million bucks and he's out running around the world and he comes back and says, so Martha, how did that penny thing work out? She goes, you know, I got $10 million. He's like, what? <laughs> so, so I want you to think about leads in the same way. Kenny's your only client. It's it. You're never going to get any more people until you talk to somebody else. And you call Kenny and it's like, I just want to know how I'm doing. I know I haven't found you at home yet. I'm really trying to grow my business and everything. If you were to rate the activity that you and I have had and the success where we're at right now, and, and how do you feel like we're out doing the right thing, what would that be? Now, if it's anything less than an eight, you're not asking. So if he says eight, it's like, oh my God, that's awesome. How do I get to a nine or a 10? You know, Mitchell, find me a house. So Kenny, I know, I can just tell by your personality, you probably know other people that are similar to you. <laughs> Do you have anybody that you might be able to refer me to that you'd be honored to refer me to? They don't have to be wanting to buy or sell right now. So that would be somebody that could be a very important person I develop a relationship with. And if you do know somebody that wants to buy or sell, that would be great too. So if you would do me a favor and just think about one person that if you were going to refer them to me, who would that be? Well, before you give me that answer, I'm going to also ask you to give me their phone number and their name. And I'm going to call them and I'm going to tell them how great of a person you are called giving honor and let them know what I do. So that's right, two, right? So Kenny turns into two. Now I'm going to call Kenny back again and ask him for another one. Two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 1,024, right? Mm -hmm. And you go up from there. That's how that penny is doubling, right? See how, how quickly that goes? So is when you're asking for referrals, it's your life. You're serious as heck about it. You might have to be having fun. It's like you've got this, this kind of this bubbly thing going on in the background all the time. So you're very inviting when you're talking to somebody, even if you're not in front of them, right? And, and if you, you know, do that old sales thing, you have a little mirror on your desk and you're smiling, people can actually feel your smile through the phone, right? right? It'd, be like, it'd be like, Kenny, I've got some really 
bad news for you, but you're smiling. It's like, you sound happy. It's like, it's like, well, I am, because I'm, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm smiling and I'm trying not to say, holy crap. You know, but, but they can feel it through the phone, right? You're, you're a reflection. Yeah, right. So, so the idea is to transfer your energy to somebody and then have them give back to you in the form of a referral. So even if you only get one client, if you know what to say to them, and you let them know what you're doing, because every person in this room, no matter when you did it, and I and I, so I, I always tell people like you're new in the industry, but you're not new in this world. You know, I mean, you're you're not you know some young guy who got out of college and has no idea what he wants to do. You run a business, and it's like, so what are you doing? It's like hey, you know what I, I run this medical service and I take care of people and and, and it's a transportation, but. I found a new passion in, in real estate, and I'm, I love what I'm doing. I, I think I've made an incredible career decision, and over the next many years, I'm, gonna, I'm going to create a real estate business unparalleled, and I also want to build my own real estate uh, portfolio, and the only way I can do it is to be involved. Do you want to go on this trip with me? Well, all I really want to do is go out and find a house with you on a Saturday, but, but they're going on the trip with me, right? So that's important. Uh, so, it's hard to talk about hot leads. To talk about hot leads and leads when you don't have a lot, but I guarantee you that if I leave here today and and give you all a challenge and make some phone calls, that you're going to come up with clients and a sale. So one, two, three, so there's eleven of you, right? It's kind of funny to think about it that if eleven of you only made ten phone calls today, you would make a 110 phone calls, right? And if you only make 10 tomorrow, so you make 550 phone calls from this group this week just by calling 10 people a day and inviting them into your life, having them in, inviting yourself into their lives, asking them about people that you know. Because you have to have leads. So it is 10. It's 10 to 1 as a normal rule because so many people are going to buy way down the road. But well, what if you got 10 leads every single month? And you know that in that lead conversion, that 30 to 40% of people normally buy, is within a few months, your January leads are going to start coming back to you because you're doing what? You're calling them every single Wednesday and asking them how they are. How's my lender treating me? You know? Hey, did you ever go on that trip with your wife you were talking about? You were going to steal away for a week and, and, and go to Napa and go stay in a hotel. Hey, you remember that? Yeah, hey, I promised my wife the same thing, and I, I finally got to do it. I know how much it meant to her. I know how much it meant to him to tell him, hey, you know what? You were talking about that fishing trip with your friends. I think you should go. So if you remembered that stuff. So in, in here, by the way, there's a thing called an all about you form. The more you know about your clients, the more they're going to love and care about you, and if you show them love and care. So in the email I sent you this morning, Everything in the core is about making money. But the real motto is make a lot of money, save a lot of money, and then, and then because of who runs it, it's give away a lot of money. And, and mandatorily, I have to give away a certain amount of money every single month. So it's just part of my dashboard to stay in the group. Yes, just a hundred? hundred thousand. Just, that's it. Okay. Um, so if any of you want to go over scripts personally, about how to call leads. How many of you have existing leads right now that are working, but you haven't been able to do anything with them? Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so here's the thing. I called um, in January. Uh, Freddie Mac came out with a California program. It is only in California right now. Mm -hmm. It's called Open Doors. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now they've already made some changes to it, which is a bummer. But if you have a 620 credit score. You can get a three and a half percent FHA loan with a 620 credit score. There's a two-point origination fee, so $400,000 loan is an $8,000 fee. They just happen to give you a two percent loan. They give you a two percent loan at zero interest to cover that fee, because bond programs and down payment assistance programs don't come with lender-paid costs. So I would never get paid unless I charge money. But the thing is, is it's three and a half. If you take a 620 credit score and go into any lender, even Quicken, you're going to be around four to four and a quarter for a regular rate. So that's why this program, it's like, hey, 
if you've got a credit score and it's X, you're okay. Right? It's like, wow, well, my credit score is 612. Oh, man, i got to tell you what. My lender is so great. They will sit down with you, and if there's any possibility of getting your score over 620, they'll show you how to do it. Oh, God, that takes six months or a year. It's like, no. I have Heidi, my gal who's supposed to close today, that her husband has this lien, is Heidi's credit score. Now, this is the change that they made, because I've got to tell you the real story here. It's 583. So for 30 days, they brought out this Freddie Mac Open Doors program, and it was 600, not 620. So I got her from 583 to 603 in 10 days. We had her opt out, just go on, on TransUnion, uh, every place, and opt out. When you opt out, you can get your score up two or three points. That means you will never ever, for a period of time, get a solicitation from Discover or MasterCard for credit. Right? So you've opted out of getting new credit, that can enhance your score. But next to every, at, next to every single credit that we run, because we use a company called Partners, there's an extra box. So your credit score over here is 688, and there's a box right next to it. This one might say plus 19, right? So if it's plus 19, that means that your credit score can go to 707. So Shaween, who's my, my uh, assistant, she goes into what's called Credit Expert. She goes into that file, hits Credit Expert, mm -hmm. And then she pulls up the first card. It's a city bank. It's at nine grand. And she takes it. And she starts toggling it this way. Eight grand, seventy-five hundred, sixty-eight hundred, and the score goes from six eighty-eight to seven hundred three. Now she's not going to go any further than that because we know we can't get the client to seven twenty. So why have them pay down more? So now we know we got to pay twenty-two hundred dollars on your city bank. So now she goes to TransUnion. Well, TransUnion, Citibank is on there already, and it's the same thing. So it's like, wow, we only have to change one credit card by 2200 bucks, and the score goes from 688 to 700 Totally different product when you're talking especially conventional loans with PMI. The difference between 699 and 700 on a $400,000 loan for PMI is about $40 a month for one point. Mm -hmm. One point on a credit score. So these are the kind of the things that, that you'll be talking to your clients about, about what, what is available and what can be done. So if all of you have leads, and, and, I, and by the way, some of your leads are, are from or with other lenders. That is not a consequence to me. If you call me up and you say, what's, what's the gal that you use from time to time? Is there somebody that gets that, that does some, some stuff in here? Yes, Cindy. Yes, Cindy. So, so, and one of you told me about Cindy, Cindy's really great, but Cindy may not know how to script something, or she may not have given you the right script, or you're trying to get a buyer to do something. You're calling me on an existing buyer that you have, that you're working with another lender, but how powerful are you, and what happens to me if I give you a script or help you role play into convincing that buyer to decide to buy a home this weekend? Because it totally changes your life. It's not my client. But you are. Whether I get to do business with you now or later, you're my client. You're my, part, my business partner, really. And so if I help you convert your leads, you become more powerful. And as you get organic leads from people, you'll give me a lead. You'll give me a person to work with so that I can do the same thing. What I do with my clients is when I get them, the typical call goes like this. Hey, Kenny, this is Mitchell Chernock with American Pacific Mortgage. How are you? Good. Cool. So I was speaking with, and I think he's a friend of yours, Adam Baroxai, and he asked me to give you a call about purchasing a house. Got a few minutes? Sure. By the way, it's called radio talk. You always pause three or four seconds between questions because he might have a question. Or it's like, hey, you know what? I'm with my kids. Can you call me later? Mm -hmm. so if I'm talking. He's like, is this guy not paying attention to me? So it's, so, Kenny, when I was speaking with Adam, he said you actually wanted to buy a house in April. So, I mean, that's like right now in my world, you know, us lenders, we always look at everything in 45 days. To tell you the truth, if I got you ready today and you found a house in April, your first house payment isn't until June. And you're like, my kids are already out of school and I haven't even bought a house yet. How did that happen? 
but it's about getting him set up, right? Here's how I'm going to work. I tell him what I'm going to do. Same thing for you, right? You tell them what you're going to do. I'm going to, I'm, going to, I'm going to line you up with a great lender. I'm going to get you qualified. I'm going to follow up with you every single week. If there's property, I'm going to show you houses every week. Um, I'm an old-fashioned guy, so I cannot say that new things don't work. I just know that I'm very tactile. I can't, if I went back into real estate, I can't imagine that I would ever email listings to a client. Okay? The reason being is, client being is clients don't know the etiquette, even if you tell them, oh, I'm, I'll go drive by this house. And the seller's out front, no one's on. Right? And my client, who Kenny referred me, was referred by somebody else by somebody else, so she doesn't really know Kenny very well, and she shows up to the house, like popular listing. And the seller's like, what's up? It's like, I, just, I saw your house for sale, I just wanted to drive by and check it out. Oh, really? Hey, my, hey, my realtor's due here in about two minutes. He can show you the house. Right? <laughs> so you don't want people showing up and doing that kind of stuff, even open houses, right? So it's like, it's like here's my business cards. If you're going to go out and look at open houses without me this weekend, would you take these with you? And anybody that says, do you have a realtor? You say, yeah, I do. His name's Adam. He's an awesome guy. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you might want to recruit me, right? Right? Yeah. So, so it's, it's all about what you say and making sure that you have everything very linear in your mind as to how you want to do it. Okay? So, hot leads are really important. Asking your leads for help is really important. Always waiting is really important. If you close it, when you close a transaction, not yet, send out a survey, ask them how you did it, call them about the survey. Um, I have, uh, I've started doing this. Um, I don't do it as often as I would like because a lot of people feel that you're, you're doing something that they're not ready for. But I close a, a transaction with Kenny. He's my buyer. I call him up. How's the house? Have you guys moved in yet? Oh, you met my wife. We, the house was set up Saturday morning and we started moving Friday night. It's like, really? Oh, yeah. She's like, totally got it together. Well, how would you guys like it if I helped throw you a housewarming party in the next few weeks? Invite your neighbors, a couple of your friends. Um, I would love to be able to do that for you. All you need to do, Kenny, is tell me the date and give me a list of all of your friends for me to invite them for you. <laughs> right? Hey, Mark. It's, uh, it's Amar, right? Amar, yes. Yeah, Amar. Hey, Amar, did you, did you know that your best friend, Kenny, just bought a house? He just moved in. It's like, no. It's like, wow. Hey, so he's having a housewarming party. I'm on his real estate team. I work with his real estate agent, and we're throwing a little shindig for him. He knows about it. It's, it's just a wonderful way for you to come see his new home, and he's so proud of what he and his wife just accomplished. Do you think you could come? For sure, yeah. So I hang up the phone with him. Margot's in, and he's talking to his wife, sister, mother, father, brother, aunt, uncle, best friend. He says, I just got invited to a party by, it's like, again, he's like, my, my realtor doesn't even call me. And, and this guy's throwing a party with his realtor for, for, for one of your friends? Who is that guy? It's, it's just delivering. Has anybody here read the book Raving Fans? It's an awesome little book. I hope I'm not getting too far afield. Getting too far afield here. The, the book um, is a wonderful little book. It's very fast to read. It's, I think, like 140 pages or something. Uh, but this guy walks into his business office, and there's another man sitting on his couch. <clears throat> but nobody walked by him. And it'd be like if I, if I was sitting where Adam is, and I know nobody's in here, and I walk in here, and there's somebody sitting in here. It's like, well, who are you? Says, well, I'm your fairy godmother. He goes, you're my fairy godmother? You're a guy. He goes, literally, in the book, it's like, I, I got the assignment. I'm here. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm your fairy godmother. And he takes him on a journey meeting people that had nothing, that learned how to deliver an amazing experience and grew these incredible businesses and delivered a raving fan experience. So that we, if we, everybody in here, if you had, if everybody in here just had 10 cheerleaders out there talking about you out in the marketplace, we'd be doing a lot of business. So, um, past clients, uh, Thursdays is past clients. Friday is cold calling. 
They say cold calling because some people still cold call. I don't ever do cold calls. All of my calls are personal. Maybe I spoke with Martha and I, I absolutely just, I pounded on her until she gave me somebody's name and it was you. And I'm just calling to say hi and let you know what I do. And she thought that you'd be a good person for me to meet. Uh, you're a contractor. I work with contractors. I've done, a, a, I've done a bunch of renovation transactions with my clients. I might need somebody like you. How would you like to start a relationship? Can you do it? So that gives me a chance to tell you, I'm, I've probably closed more renovation deals here in the Bay Area than anybody. It's FHA 203K and Fannie Home Style. Uh, the Home Style loan I just closed, um, up, uh, it's a little town near Auburn, I can't remember, but it's on, there's a little river area. And the house literally looks like it'd probably be better if we all played Firebomb. But, uh, so it's about 300,000 worth of work. But she's putting five, she put 5% down, it closed last Friday. And so she paid 260 for the house, a little over 300 and more, 5% down, and she's got this huge construction escrow, and her contractor has started working on the property this week. She's gonna go out and do some demolition and stuff and, and fix up the house, but, but it's a house that was listed for cash. And we ended up doing a loan on it because there's renovation finance. And so there's always a way to make stuff work, right? Any questions from anybody? I don't, uh, I want to make sure they take great care of you all. It's, it's after, after 12. After you're done, I would love five minutes and, uh, yeah. and just, a, and just a, set everybody up for a little challenge. Yeah, very cool. So um, I think it's really important um, that I, I went through all of this with you. Um, I'm going to, uh, what I want to do, uh, wow, okay. uh, I have a, uh, a text message that I'd like to send you all. Okay, so I'm going to give you my business cards. I think I think there is there some. They're in the closet. They are. Anybody who doesn't have one, let me know. I think. I think Shereen gave me some extra ones here somewhere. The reason is is I want you to text me your phone number, and I'm going to text you. <laughs> an yeah, audio, yeah. and it's an audio from when I was in Scottsdale, but it is two realtors who close hundreds of deals a year, and it's them role-playing with each other. And, and these guys are so good at it. It's just amazing what they do. Um, so it's, and it's a lot of fun because you get to listen to these. So if, if you said to me you wanted to know something about listing, and, uh, and I'm sorry, what's your first name again? Anissa. Anissa. And Anissa wanted to know something about working with buyers. And Angela wanted to know something about how to hold the best possible open house. And, uh, and Amar wanted to know what is the best possible listing presentation. I have audios. They're about an hour on each one of those things. But they're not conversations. These are realtor coaches talking about real situations with other coaches. And literally, you will get information that other people have to pay about $500 a month to get, and I will be happy to send it to you. Um, so there's nothing I can't get you, um, and, and it's a lot of fun to listen to this. So I think I've, 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 I've given out as much as I can without yeah. going too crazy here, and I, wanna, I really want to invite everybody to know I'm, I'm available to talk to you about your existing clients and move them along just so you can have fun. Uh, obviously, I would love it if, if you would also uh, treat me to sending new clients, and you'll find out what we do. My average turnaround for a client is one hour to a call, one day to an approval, unless there's something wrong. So at least you know that if, if you got a client on Friday and says, my wife and I are buying a house tomorrow, it's like, oh, with who? With you. It's like, well, you're not even done yet. Well, let's get you ready. Okay? Richard? Yes, sir. This 4920? Uh, no, no, the, the cell number. Uh, it's uh, 486-2860. Oh, 2860. Oh, no. Office yeah. says office. What? On, on, you're kidding me. Yes. Yeah. Because these are brand new cards. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh. Okay, so okay. Mitch, give me the number here. Oh, my God. Yep. It's 707-486-2860. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah, these, are, these are brand new, too. So you got it. That's not, you got it. That's not good. Yeah. yeah. Good thing we are. My partner did that. They just arrived last week. So, yeah. Just, just text me, and I will text you but, this. Yeah, but you want to just post what it. What I was 
Supposed to be the other way around. I'm ready yeah. for Pacific yeah. Yeah. So, so, yes. yeah. I'm going to yeah. send you our client. Oh, how nice. That, uh, that he was interested on the listing that I have. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to talk to him today, okay. and then sure. I'll send it to you. Cool. And hey guys, ask and you shall receive, right? But uh, the, before Mitch finishes up on here, like when Mitch is done, besides like uh, Mitch is going to give you a personal challenge, before everybody leaves this room, I'm going to have you guys write down like a challenge of like five things that you're going to complete by the end of the day. Because when you start doing this kind of stuff, like uh, since I've been in here, I've texted people, like I'm going to do my video card, like yeah, Facebook. When it's their birthday, do not send them a, one of those happy birthday things. Record All a video, right. guys. Well, record a video, I swear, it's so powerful. And it's free. You don't have to even pay for bomb bomb. Yeah. Facebook. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's <laughs> so easy to do. Um, by the way, um, uh, uh, there are some great books out there. So if you text me, um, I will text you audiobooks. If you've not used an audiobook, then you can load them for free. If you've used it, you, you might have enough credits or you might be able to do it for free. Um, one, one of the books that I love sending out is by a woman. Her name is Marie Forleo. Um, and I ended up listening to her on the internet and I bought her book. Um, it's called Everything is Figure Outable. Read it. You did. So, so the I mean, miracle equations. Right? Yeah. So, so it's a great book because it's a story about her mom, mm -hmm. and then it's a story about her, and it's an excellent book. You just you just have to take time to realize that we are given challenges because there's an answer to them. We just have to fight them, right? Yeah. So I'm I'm glad that you got that book, Martha. So we can yeah, all share on, that um, stuff. Audio, audible. Yeah, it's on Audible. Okay. Right here. <laughs> So, hey guys, uh, uh, Mitch, can I jump in now? You can. I just want to say something to you. That is an amazing song. I know. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I, I, I just, I just I, I, the reason I'm telling you is, is I only heard it about two or three months ago. Mm -hmm. And my, my great granddaughter sings, and she wanted to learn the song Hallelujah. Oh. And Raise Hallelujah came up, and I gave it. My daughter is very religious, and her husband was very sick at the time. Mm -hmm. If you want to be inspired, I don't care what religion you are, that song is a mind blowing song. And what's yeah. the name of it? It's called Raise, Raise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Raise? Yeah. Raise Hallelujah. Hallelujah. R A Z E. R A I. It's like Raise up. Oh, yeah. Hey, so guys, uh, one of the things we're going to do, we're all going to go do a boomerang in front of the picture when we leave this room, in front of the sign. For Mitch, just to show our appreciation on here. Thank you, buddy. I hope that you guys enjoyed today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, no, um, is this the other Monday? That's what I need to know. Or is it? Is it I'll, we'll set it up on here. He'll come every other Monday right. on here. Oh, and, yes, and we're going to go more great. into the scripting I part. Yes. Right. Yeah. And the cool thing is, like, there's a lot of people that make offers. And uh, they'll say, hey, call me, right? And you know they're being inauthentic. Mitch is really authentic. I'm telling you guys. Thank you. I meet people and I can, like, I have a weird sense of, uh, of cutting through the fat. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I don't know what it is. It's just maybe from my background. I can, I, like, when I met Mitch on here, I, can, I knew that he was really, like, uh, his words were in line with his actions, right? So if you guys ever need help on there, you're welcome to reach out to him. And you, it doesn't have to be one of his transactions, right? We're all here to help each other out. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, do you mind if I say something about the time that we met? Because you, you don't realize the metaphor that you just said is cutting through the fat. Yeah. When you and I first started talking, we were talking about what we were doing and how much weight you had lost. And, and, and now I lost a lot of weight, but not anything to what you did. Well, don't call me fat bastard. <laughs> <laughs> no. It was, uh, oh my it's, God. It, was, it was amazing the conversation we had because you had just come back. You're just getting things together, and you had this in, in, <laughs> incredible physical trans transition that you've done for yourself. So, you know, I was a porker, guys. Yeah, I was a little fat, 240 pounds when oh. I left the car business. How much? Under 200. Really? But yeah, yeah. So yeah, but the, the thing is, you you got to go with your gut feeling on here, right? And Mitch is one of those people. Like we don't invite everybody in here. If you guys ever notice, there's a lot of people that stop by the office. We have certain people that are in here because of energy and how 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 they're in line with their actions so hey guys one of the things here like we can all walk away from this right and today will be a forgotten day like yeah. every other monday that could have been right if you write down like five things that you want to do today right and one of them could be the by friday do the 100 right 
put this in your CRM. And then four other things that you want to do, you really train your brain like, hey, that whatever you're committing to, you're going to do. And it's such a transformation from your brain understanding that, hey, I'm going to hold you accountable, right? Sometimes uh, she's got to see me get up in the middle of the night at 11, and she goes, what happened? I goes, oh, my God, I was supposed to do something. There's no way I'm going to go to sleep until this is done. And that's accountability, right? And, and you really just can train don't your send brain. a message of that out. No, you right. can schedule send Because it goes ding. Yeah. Schedule send out there. But the thing is, if you, everybody has a pen, write down, like, besides this for fri by Friday. And when you guys get done, text Mitch, say, hey, I did it. I hope you guys enjoy that thorough presentation here by Mitchell. And again, you'll find his contact information down below. And Mitch, do you want to add anything else? Oh, I definitely do. What an awesome group of professional agents. I had a lot of fun. Learning how to grow your business can be the best thing in your life because it also goes home. You got to take care of your family. The best way to do that is take care of your business and your family at the same time. What an honor to be here at AHS Realty here in Concord. And if you guys are in real estate in, in uh, Northern California, feel free to reach out to us. We'll definitely show you guys the office, give you guys a personalized tour. And if you're watching this video here on YouTube or anywhere else, and you need a, either, either an agent referral or a lender referral, feel free to reach out to either Mitchell or, or I. We'll definitely put you in the right hands as far as lending or real estate and get you set up with a premier agent in your area. And uh, uh, Mitchell, how many uh, states are you licensed in? Um, actually, we're licensed in 49 states, and actually I can do business in all 49. We have an integration group that is incredible in every state. But California is my place. Looking forward to take great care of you. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day.